Pastor Wilkerson. Hey! I'll give you an elbow, sir. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the chicken wing. The chicken wing bump, bump. Huh? <laughs> How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine, man. Frank, you're getting tall, man. Your hair just keeps growing taller and taller. All the barbershops are closed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's Excuse what he's himself, too, right? <laughs> So, All right. Pretty we, good. We have a couple questions given to you by the mm -hmm. viewers and given to you by us. The questions are, what age were you when you felt the Lord was calling you to become a pastor? That's a great question. Uh, well, I will tell you this. I got saved when I was in, in elementary school at 13 years old when I came to youth conference. That's when I surrendered myself to serve the Lord. But uh, I didn't really surrender myself to be a pastor. I never thought I would be a pastor. I had good pastors growing up. But I just thought, there's no way I could do that. I, I just, uh, I, I thought, boy, how does a pastor come up with three messages every week? I didn't know how many times you have to preach beyond that, you know. But Sunday school lessons and funerals and weddings and uh, Christian school chapels and things of that nature. And I thought, I remember standing in line at Howells Anderson College and Frankie, one of the guys says no. I, I like, Lay kept saying, what's your major going to be? And I was like, oh, my goodness, I don't know what my major's going to be. And I asked the guy beside me, I said, what's your major? And he said, uh, it's going to be pastoral theology. I said, what's that mean? He goes, man, I want to preach, brother. I got to preach or I'll die. And I remember thinking to myself, I think I'd rather die than preach. <laughs> <laughs> to be a pastor, I thought, that's going to be hard. But, um, but to answer your question, I was 32 years old. And I became a pastor, really, because God made it obvious someone needed me. And he said, John, I want you to do this. And so I surrendered to serve myself, serve the Lord at the age of 13 at a youth conference. And I think that's where I would do whatever God wanted me to do. If you want me to be a missionary, you want me to be a janitor, I don't care. But I would do whatever he wants me to do. But it was, it was at the age of 32, whenever someone said, we think you could be our pastor, would you be it? And I prayed about it for about two weeks, and then I became the pastor. Oh, that's great. Uh, what are things that people should do while stuck at home during this quarantine? Man, is that a tough question or what? <laughs> We're used to going, right? Yeah. Used to going and doing things. And, uh, you know, I think there's a couple things. First of all, can you think with me some people who are quarantined in the Bible? Who are some people that got stuck in one place that they really didn't want to be, but they got stuck there? Who, who comes to your mind? Anybody come to your mind, Frankie? Uh, the Apostle John. Yeah. He was put on the Isle of Patmos, right? And he spent his time there. What did he do while he was there? You remember what he did? He wrote the book of the Revelation. He was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. He, so he had a relationship with the Lord. And he wrote, uh, he wrote a book of the Bible under the inspiration of the Scriptures. Apostle Paul was quarantined for two years in Rome. And God used him especially as well. And I think about Elijah. He was a prophet. And God said, I want you to go camp out by the creek. Camp out by the brook Cherub. And he stayed right there. And so I think while we're quarantined, I think uh, one thing is I want to do is I want to stay close to the Lord. And we do that through two ways. Number one is through the Word of God. Number two is through prayer. But then I don't want to just let it end there. I want to be able to minister to people. Maybe that's where we could text, call. Uh, yesterday I called about 50 people that I knew that uh, tried to rec you know, tried to encourage them during this time. And even as teenagers, you can call and encourage people. You can text folks, not only your leaders, and your bus captains, bus workers, but you can also encourage other people around you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, what should people, what should people would do if they feel discouraged? Yeah, I'm gonna preach on that tonight at six o'clock. Uh, tune so in. Tune in tonight, that's just a little advertisement. <coughs> First Samuel chapter 30 tells about a discouraged man and what he did. And I want to encourage you, maybe rather me answer that question, why don't you look at 1 Samuel chapter 30 and say, what did this guy do? It was David. And man, you talk about a guy who was down, you know. Uh, he came real low, and, and, and he was really low, and low had a basement. <laughs> it was really bad. Uh, he was struggling. Uh, he had been rejected by his nation and by his king. He had been rejected by the Philistine people. And then he comes back home and finds out that someone has stolen uh, all his wife and his kids and uh, taken and kidnapped them. And his, everything he owned is in ashes. And he was low, and so were the people with him. And the Bible says that he was discouraged. So what did he do? You figure that out or listen tonight at 6 o'clock. Tune in, 6 o'clock. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit about how a day in life at the Wilkerson home is like? Oh, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. 
Well, I am so thankful that God gave me a family. I never would have dreamed that would have this many kids. I never would have dreamed. I would not know what, uh, what kind of wife God would want for me. But I am so grateful that God gave me Miss Linda and that he's given us nine kids. Now, uh, in the Wilkerson home, of course, I think there's not very many things that are, that are um, routine. Everything's a little bit uh, helter-skelter and probably a little bit unique. Every day is different. But I'll tell you some things that happened during this quarantine time. I think, first of all, uh, their dad is grounded, so I don't go to the airport anymore. I don't know if I can find the airport right now. Okay? I don't have to go to the airport. Uh, I, don't, I don't have to go out to the college to teach classes two days a week, although I miss going to college, but that's not what I have to do. Uh, I don't have to go out to Hammond Baptist or City Baptist to meet the teachers so much. I do get to talk to them by way of uh, intercom. But uh, so what I need to do, what I get to do, and because it's still cold outside, I like to set a fire, fire in the fireplace. So that's probably one thing I do. I did that this afternoon before I came here. And now Lydia and uh, mom are sitting around the fireplace uh, enjoying the fire that I made there. So fireplace is probably something, setting a fire in the fireplace. Then I, I played basketball with the boys. My knees are reminding me I played basketball with them. I went on a, I went on a uh, bike ride uh, with them on, on the trail here. I know that, I don't know how, I don't know if we're supposed to do it or not supposed to do it, but we just did it. We just did it, and we had a good time together. They took me, and, and uh, then my knees hurt even more after that situation there. But uh, Dad's been a little more active and, and enjoying the time with them. We have sat around the living room. We've read the scriptures. That's been good. Uh, we, today, before we ate lunch, uh, I gave, we said, all right, let's find out 10 things we can be thankful for. And we stood around. They were holding their plates. They were excited about eating food. So that's a good time to get thankful when you're hungry, right? <laughs> so they came up with 10 things pretty quick. And I said, all right, now let's give us 10 things that we can pray for. And we began around, and each of them began to pipe up little ideas that we can pray for people, situations. And you were people we prayed for because uh, two of our kids said, pray for the bus teams, pray for the bus routes, pray that God will keep the folks focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. So that was our prayer today. And so, I don't know, uh, we, get to, we get to enjoy this. We, we turned off our, we had cable, we watched sports with cable and then a few other things, but uh, rodeos, I like rodeos. I know I'm kind of weird, but I like rodeos. <laughs> but... Uh, so uh, my dad, my grandfather was a rodeo guy, was a, was a roper, a cowboy. But uh, we turned off our, our cable and just uh, told him just to not, not watch that. And, and uh, so we've been doing some other things at home. Lydia, Lydia's written a song, so we've been listening to her write her song. So maybe she'll sing it on tour, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have a quick little pop question here. So you know how in church we... Uh, the, Chicago and Teen sit on the left side of you. Yeah. And uh, sometimes when uh, we got a little reaction to our bus workers. Yeah. So deep down, <laughs> truly, how do you feel when we react like that? <laughs> you know, it's two, there's two things. Number one, I'm thrilled that you love your bus workers. I like that. I think it's good. <laughs> Number two, I'm <laughs> aggravated beyond many. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not aggravated, but I, I'm not aggravated, but I do think sometimes when it gets going too far, I mean, it's just good to clap and, you know, but sometimes you get a little crazy on that, but I'm glad because they mean a lot to us. Our bus worker mean a lot to us and you want to encourage them. And I think about Paul, when he saw the brethren, he thanked God and took courage and your encouragement to your bus workers and to your drivers and so forth and so on is very big league and it gives them courage to keep on doing it. And I thank God for that. I think also we have to kind of keep in mind there are probably about 3,000 other people in the auditorium that need to be able to listen and keep going in the program. So we kind of maybe need to strike a happy medium in that situation. <laughs> Following that question, how important is the bus ministry to you? Oh, man, I love the bus ministry. I love the bus ministry. We parked our buses out behind there in one of our things, and I think about them and I almost cry because I'm sorry they can't roll right now. And I go out to the college and I drive through and I see those empty buses and I wish they could pick you up. I really do. I love having Brother John Francis mention uh, to the bus workers today and the bus captains and the bus riders. I'm thankful for the bus ministry. I'm not necessarily a bus kid myself. I rode the bus for the first time when I was eight years old, but I was asked to lead singing on the bus. <laughs> so, but I love the bus ministry. I was a bus captain here for five years, or four and a half years. I was a freshman in college whenever uh, in December, Brother Young called me in and said, John, we need a captain. And uh, the division leader thinks you can do it. Would you do it? And I had the joy to be a bus captain here at First Baptist. My wife was a bus captain for probably 15 years uh, while I was, at, even longer than that, 16, 17 years. 
uh, before I became a pastor here. And she loves the Lord. She loves bus kids. Now all my, 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 uh, my de- de- excuse me, Derek is a bus captain. He works in the bus route there in Long Beach, Preston, and, and Lydia and Drew. And all of our kids ride a bus every week to church, even though we only live about four minutes. A bus <laughs> picks them up, takes them to Whiting, and they go pick up people, pull off, get them on the bus, and ride and sing songs and give a challenge. And so I love the bus ministry. I love you guys. Thank you. And I love you. Thank you for letting me join you on this special, uh, special broadcast. I'm looking forward to uh, Brother Ricky preaching to you momentarily. And I love Brother Ricky and Miss Zadie. thought about them. I saw Miss Zadie, I think, yesterday on Calumet. She was honking at me. And I think he was there. I think it was Calumet. No, it may have been, may have been Ridge Road. I can't remember. One of those places I saw her and her mom together, I think. And they were honking and waving. And, and we love Miss Zadie. Appreciate her. Appreciate Brother Ricky and their ministry here to the Chicagoland teens. I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you, Pastor. Um, before you leave, can you leave the Chicagoland teens a quick message? And uh, previously, before you do that, can you tell the others who don't know who you are, who you are? Yeah. My name is John Wilkerson. I had the joy to be the pastor here at First Baptist Church of Ham, Indiana. This church started 134 years ago and uh, in a conference room of the Morton House Hotel. And uh, that was started with Pastor Allen and uh, Allen Hills, his last name. And he stayed here for six months. And he came here and he gathered people and told them about Jesus, got them in, a, in that conference room. And then Pastor Pruitt came and he kept on going with that group of people. They moved to the Opera Hall. Then the first mayor of Hammond uh, gave some family property so that they could uh, build the first building right here on Sibley Avenue. It's where the Walker Building is now in that parking lot beside it. And I'm humbled to be a part of the history here. I came here as a 13-year-old boy, and I went to youth conference, and God touched my heart. And five years later, I came back to start House Anderson College, met my sweet wife here, got educated here, went off and served the Lord. And 23 years later, God let me come back to be the pastor at uh, First Baptist Church of Ham, and I'm glad to be a part of that. If I could give you any advice, I would say, and by the way, Frank, I want you to know I've been praying for you. Thank you know it's very difficult to go in and find that your little sister, your sister, older sister had gone home to be with the Lord. And uh, every day, even today, Brother John on the television, or this morning on the live stream, he mentioned to you, do you hear him? Yeah. Yeah, he loves you. Everybody loves you. And we love all of our young people. I would just encourage you to stay, stay clean, stay close, uh, stay connected. I would say those a couple things. Stay clean. Don't, don't let fill garbage, bad attitudes, bad friends, bad actions, bad associations affect you. The Bible says we're supposed to be unspotted from the world. We're in the world, but don't let the world get on you. Mm-hmm. And uh, number one, stay clean. Number two, stay close to Jesus. Stay close to Jesus. He's the one who will never fail you. Parents, we fail our kids. I've done it so many times, it's embarrassing. I failed my wife. I failed my friends. But God has never failed me. And God will not fail you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then I would say also stay connected. Uh, connected to the Lord, obviously. Connected to the local church. You need church. A man called us today after the service. And uh, he hasn't been here for over eight years to the church. And his life has fallen apart in a lot of ways. Family has been just shattered. And he just turned it on today. He turned on the internet and he saw the service. He saw Brother John, who used to be his bus captain years ago. And he called him. Brother John's been trying to reach out to him for five years. And he's not responded. But today he called and said, man, I miss my church. Amen. I need church. I need the Lord. I want to come back to the Lord. Don't do that. Stay connected. Don't ever have a lapse in your life where you get away from God. It's very dangerous and very expensive to get away from God. You go into Babylon, you pick up some baggage. You go into Egypt or the world, you're going to cause some trouble. I would encourage you not to do that. So uh, stay close, stay clean, stay connected. Stay connected yourself to, to Brother and Mrs. Torres. Love them, they love you. Stay faithful. If you're in City Baptist, work hard. Stay connected to what's going on there. And uh, get excited about what God has for our future. Amen. Uh, can you pray with us for, for a little bit? I sure can. Thank, Thank you. you. Dear Lord, thank you for the chance to be on this particular uh, program. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Ricky. I can't wait to kind of hear what he's going to preach to us about. I pray you'd use him in a wonderful way. Thank you for his passion, his heart. Thank you for these young men. I appreciate Adrian and Juwan and Frankie. And then for many others who've been calling in. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity just to hear their voice and some of those who called in on the answers. I pray you bless them. 
I pray you would keep us clean, close, and connected to you and to your church family. Help us not to take trips into Egypt or Babylon. Help us not go back to Egypt and help us not to get into there and stay in the world. Help us, to Lord, to very quickly stay away from that. I pray you bless our young people. Use them. Help them to see the value of eternal living and, uh, and giving a total life surrendered to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you, friends. Thank you so much. Thank you.